Today I'm making a very small batch of uh, tomato ketchup. I'm going to make it in my little croquette. I started this, uh, I don't know, two or three years ago. Um, Paul didn't want to have high fructose corn syrup and uh, at that time I couldn't find ketchup that didn't include it. Uh, now it's, uh, you can find that all over the place. Um, when I normal my normal recipe, and I'll put uh, I'll put the instructions for both uh, down in the comments. My normal recipe uses two cans of uh, tomato paste, and I only buy the tomato paste that the only ingredient is tomatoes. There's another ingredient that sometimes is found in canned tomato paste, and I have found that the ketchup tastes bitter if that ingredient is in. Um, is in the tomato paste. So I look at my label and, and if the only ingredient is tomatoes, that's that's the one that I buy. Today though, um, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try using my, um, my tomato powder that I made out of my own tomatoes that I grew. I'm going to make my tomato paste with that and then use that to make my ketchup. There's two different jars here. You see the difference? This one is made out of vine ripe tomatoes. See how red it is? And then this one was made out of my out of my uh, uh, winter ripening ones, the ones that ripened under the bed. So you can see there's a there's a big difference <laughs> in garden ripe tomatoes and uh, and those winter ones, even though these still tasted better than the ones in the store. This is a little bit more tart. This, this uh, winter ripening is a little bit more tart than uh, than this one is. So I'm going to mix the two. And uh, to make an equivalent of one can of uh, tomato paste, I need six tablespoons of the powder to one half cup water. And I'm going to mix it in, uh, in in this glass bowl because I want you guys to be able to uh, to see what happens to it. I'm, I'm boiling my water. Um, I have read that if you that you should add uh, hot water uh, to your tomato powder and that'll help it thicken up faster. So there's two, three, I don't want to get my little do not eat packet in there, four, five, and six. That's for one. And I need the equivalent of two. God bless you. God bless you. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to add, uh, it's a half a cup of water to each, uh, the equivalent of each can. So I'm going to add one cup of boiling water and it gets ready. I, I buy these, I, I, I look for these little croquettes at, uh, at uh, garage sales, uh, but you can still buy them new. They have a nice little removable crock that goes in them. And uh, they are great for a project like this because this needs to cook. If I cooked it on the stove, I need to cook it for at least an hour. I'd have to add extra water to it. And, and uh, I'll include that in my instructions uh, in the comment too, so that in case you don't have one of these and you want to do it on your stove top, um, but this, I, I put it in here and I cover it up and, and I can let it go for two to four hours and when I come back it's, it's, all, it's all done. So it's, it's really good. I'm also going to use, um, how's that doing? I'm going to go ahead and be putting my other things in my crock pot while I'm waiting here. Um, all right, I'm going to use a half a cup of white vinegar. And I use plain old white vinegar for this. Now, if you want to use apple cider vinegar or something, you can. But, but uh, to be ketchup, it needs to be nice and tart. You might even like a little dab more vinegar. Once you finish it, you can taste of it. And if you want yours a little bit more tart, you can add a little bit more, uh, a little bit more vinegar to it. All right. I need um, four tablespoons of brown sugar, and uh, I always use cane sugar. I don't like beet sugar; it's GMO. And I don't. There's, you know, light brown sugar and dark brown sugar. 
Um, I, I, I just I buy whatever I, I can find on sale. Uh, <laughs> three and four. Um, Yep, I buy whatever's handy because I keep molasses, and molasses is is what makes sugar brown. So if you don't have brown sugar, you can mix some molasses with your own white sugar, and that's that's the equivalent of brown sugar. Um, oh, I'm not going to do that until after I'm done with my my dry ingredients. All right, I need a tablespoon of onion powder. And this recipe, see, it only makes it only makes a one jar, and um, I love that because I just make it up fresh whenever we need it. It works. It works great. One teaspoon of garlic powder, not garlic salt, garlic powder. Okay, half a teaspoon of ground allspice, and I ran out ran out of ground and had to had to dip into my whole allspice and grind it up. But actually, it's probably just like the nutmeg. It's probably so much better now. I won't want to use the ground anymore. A half a teaspoon of that, and there's a little bit more in there. Maybe I'll add a little dab just, just to be happy. And uh, a teaspoon of salt. You can use any kind of salt you want to. I've got this this sea salt that's that's uh, never wants to come out of the come out of the jar. I feel like on that. I guess I'm gonna have to add some take part of the lid off and dump it into something. All right, a teaspoon of salt. And a tablespoon of molasses. Molasses is so good for you. Oh my goodness, it's so good. It has uh, lots of uh, lots of excellent nutrients in it, especially blackstrap molasses. Just a tablespoon. I don't mind that little extra dripping off there. That'll be good. Love molasses. Mix that off in there. All right, now my water's boiling. Okay, so I want a cup of water into my, my 12 tablespoons of powdered tomato, tomato powder. And now, as this cooks, it will thicken up, but I just wanted you to see what it's going to do here. Looky there. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, it's all already nice and thick. If you put it in dry, it just takes it a long time to, to rehydrate. All right, so there's my, there's my tomato paste. I'll drop it into my, my croquette here. And I don't need to adjust the salt because the tomato paste that I buy doesn't have any added salt. So I don't need to add any more at this stage of the game. What I did is this is based on a recipe that I found on Instructables a long time ago. And uh, I adjusted it for us. And, and when, I, when I made it the first time and Paul tasted of it, he said, that tastes like ketchup. And I said, I know it's supposed to. He said, no, I mean it tastes like ketchup. It, this tastes like commercial bottle ketchup. This doesn't taste like something homemade. There's a lot of things we want it to taste better. We want it to taste homemade. But ketchup is a funny product. It's something that once you've got a taste for your own special flavor, whether it's uh, Whataburger's Spicy Ketchup or Heinz or Hunt's, that's the one that you want. And this ketchup, it tastes like commercial ketchup. It is so good and it's great on everything that we would use it in. Uh, all right, now I'm going to uh, put this on and I'm just going to let it cook in the crock pot now for uh, uh, anywhere from two to four hours and then I'll be back and show you how it finishes up. Thank you. Bye. All right. We've been, this has been cooking for a couple of hours. In a little slow cooker. I always put this into um, just regular canning jar, just a, just a pint jar. And, uh, and, and when it would cool, I'd put it in the refrigerator. I don't can it. Um, although, if you want to can ketchup, there are some canning recipes in, um, um, in our canning books. Um, this recipe, though, I, I don't know if it's been tested. You'd have to figure out for yourself how to, 
you know, how to cut those down so that you maintain the, the amount of, uh, of vinegar that's necessary uh, for, for canning those. I, uh, but Paul liked the idea of having it in bottles. And so I think it was, um, it's I'm still working, that um, she had um, a link to, uh, she had bought these bottles and had done the research on who had the best prices and the best shipping. And so, uh, sure enough, she was right on that. So I, I ordered some bottles from these folks. And, um, um, and, and, and I'm going to try putting this into, putting my ketchup into this now. Um, I, I hope, I, I wanted it to be a little bit thinner. Um, now, you can cook yours down a little bit more. And, or maybe leave your uh, lid or jar for just a little bit. And of course, it'll thicken up a little bit as it cools too. But see, it's still pretty thick. Um, it will, uh, like I say, it'll thicken up. It'll thicken up as it cools. So I think it'll do all right. And I'll get it into the jar and then bottle, and then it'll be able to uh, uh, to pour out fairly easily. Um, we don't want to do the anticipation thing. Frankly, we don't have time at our age to spend our lives waiting for ketchup to come out of the bottle. <laughs> but, okay. I hope that this, it'll work on this funnel. If not, I've got me an empty water bottle there. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fine. I had set up an empty water bottle which has a little bit bigger hole that I was gonna cut off to use for a funnel if it, if it was too thick to, to go through this little funnel. But this is just fine. This is just, uh, you know, in, in the United States, Ketchup is not just a condiment. Ketchup is an ingredient. Take a look at your cookbooks or look at the recipes you cook and see how many times ketchup is, a, is an ingredient. It's an ingredient in barbecue sauce. It's an ingredient in, um, in sloppy joes. It's an ingredient in, uh, uh, in all kinds of foods that... Huh, meatloaf. Um, all kinds of foods that we make. So um, we go through it pretty quickly. So it's, it's real simple for me uh, doing this. Uh, to just make it up when we need it. And see this, this batch is gonna, this little jar is, a little bottle is just a perfect pint. And so it's gonna, gonna take my, there we go. Oops, got a little bit too much. Well, maybe it takes a little more than a pint. I mean, a little less than a pint. Uh, and that's my, and that's how I make ketchup. Um, you can make, if you're going to make it in a, a big crock pot, um, I would at least double and maybe triple the recipe. Um, for our family, um, I would, you know, can in it. Um, I'd probably process it according to the directions on the recipes, which is 15 minutes in a boiling water bath, or um, do it in a, in a pressure canner a little bit. But, uh, uh, but I can't tell you guys how to do that because this this particular recipe it's a little bit thick um, so um, um, so like I said I, I don't make it in advance to have it stowed up, stored up in the cabinet it's just too easy to put it together and then we have it fresh but it's delicious it tastes like regular commercial ketchup and uh, you can adjust the, the the vinegar amount just a little bit or the or the sugar amount just a little bit and I'm real happy with the texture. This is the first time that I've made it that I've made it using uh, the powdered tomato as my tomato paste and and it's just perfect. I just love it. it it's just great. Um, so um, next year I will be I I dehydrated a lot of tomatoes this year, but next year I will be doing it with a vengeance because I am loving my tomato powder. All right. So there you go. That's how to make uh, ketchup for one. <laughs> uh, small batch um, that you don't have to have to uh, have start out with 24 quarts of tomatoes to make. All right. If you like this, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe. We do appreciate you. Thanks.